Hi, everybody. Welcome to the QB School. I am JTO Sullivan. Today, Bryce Young versus the Saints locked in. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. Before we dive into the video, a quick reminder about the Quarterback School Patreon community. This group is the foundation, the bedrock of this channel. Not only is it a great way to support the channel, but you get even more Quarterback School content. So if you enjoy how I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School Patreon community. The link is in the video description. Hop over there, become a member. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get into it. All right, Bryce Young at home, rough L right here at the number one to the bottom here, a little switch release corner, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Covered. I think Bryce Young throws this thing damn near perfect. The DB almost takes it. Uh, the route certainly doesn't create any separation. The anticipation is world class. I think this is what you get with Bryce Young. That thing is right on him. But we got to be able to do something here at wide receiver. Now watch the bottom at the of the screen. The number one is going to switch release and go back to the corner. I mean, everybody is getting locked up here in the hip. I mean, there's no opportunity for you to do anything. And what I what I mean by switch release is right here. Boom, boom. Okay, so we're going to go as the new, as the number two gets out of there. So really, we're just watching this release. So he comes behind him, gives him something, sort of. Gets up to the top. You got to give him something, and then you got to run out of it. He throws this thing with capital A anticipation. Unbelievable touch. Lay it out there. It's right on him. The DB just runs a better route than the wide receiver. That's just the truth of it, y'all. I mean, that's too easy. <laughs> Damn. And again, I, this is not going to be that video, but we're not winning anywhere. Where do you want him to throw it? Look when he lets this thing go. Look at the anticipation right there. <laughs> Good luck, guy. I mean, look at everybody is hip to hip. No one close to winning. Damn. Damn. It's a bummer to see that kind of anticipation wasted because it's got great touch as well. It's damn near an interception. That's how much the coverage is great. Yeah, I appreciate right in his hip, running that trail technique. But man, we got to be able to separate better than that. Next one here, nice little naked down here to the bottom. Take it to the back. Get the fly sweep action as well. I like I like what they're doing here on the edge as well with the tight end to our left. So they're securing the edge. There's not that open edge. Love how Bryce Young can kind of flip his hips right here and put it right on the over. So there's some interesting strategic choices going on here. There might not be my favorite football plays, but I, I think it's worth acknowledging the fact of what's going on here. So the part that I like is right here, the tight end. Instead of like running him out to the flat immediately and having Bryce Young have to like navigate a short C gap, let's block him up. So we take him and we just block it. So it's like a slam and then probably get out to the flat late eventually. But we secure the edge. Hey, we get this horizontal stretch with the motion coming across. So as he comes across with the motion, the problem is, is when you do that and you block the tight end, you lose two vertical threats. So really, we've only got two vertical threats remaining with the back in the backfield. So we've got the over where the ball ends up going. And then we've got the slow clear on the corner. And so there's no real other option other than the late flat because we lose a vertical option with the motion and we lose any vertical option with the back. But I think Bryce Young does a great job here. If you're looking for like how he's special at the top of these things, when he just like barely flips his hips and just kind of flicks it right on him, accurate, it's a really nice job. Not everybody can do this. But again, there are unique strategic choices here, securing the edge. You know, again, and 19 is not helped here by the insert element of this. So he's got to insert and then go. He almost gets lapped by the over there. Hard to do. But I love Bryce Young flipping his hips right there. I mean, it's not even flipping his hips. It's almost like, you know, just kind of slowing down. He just kind of like gets under control and puts it on him. The guy's got great body control to be able to kind of control your core enough to make that throw while not necessarily flipping all the way around. Uh -uh. And again, I don't think the Panthers – you know, scheme here is helping 19 at all. If, for, if I'm going to take shots at him, I'll also point out like inserting into the C gap there, 
that's you know that's not what you want to do with a guy who's already not maybe got the you know highest miles per hour but that's a beautiful throw right on you move the launch point let's go all right the next one here we're going to work the over 19 right here nice completion all the way on to the other side of the sideline there working all the way across the field i'm not sure exactly what we're doing at the bottom of the screen we've got guys right in our face this is a nice job from 19 eventually working this thing open all the way across the field again i don't pretend to know what's going on here scheme wise with what 15 is doing at the bottom looks like he's like zombie blocking there that's not that's not faking anybody out nice shot from nine kind of staring down the barrel driving that thing right on 19. So I think it's worth acknowledging the fact that I don't know what exactly this is right here. This looks like what is normally the number one receiver on this place. And it looks like he's just like chilling and then trying to come out of it. I think normally this is best run from a normal split where you come in here and fake like you're going in this shallow and come back out. It's then paired with this over. And then whether it's an in or a post on the backside, everything is working into your vision. Man, I, I don't know about this one. This doesn't look like anything I'm familiar with where you just come out and like, uh, uh. so you don't really have an option here. I thought it's a nice job eventually getting it to 19 here, running that kind of crosser all the way across the field. So no, one, yes, two, you can drive it. You can see though, it takes a while to develop, right? It's pretty rare to catch crossers on the opposite sideline from within the pocket. It's usually like a naked that extends not a drop back from the pocket. Next one here, this is rough. Third and six, strip sack, fumble, outside the pocket. You know, I don't love this call, if I'm being honest. Obviously, got to hold on to the ball. Easier said than done. You know, I gotcha. All those types of things. Thanks, Captain Obvious. Huge turnover. The problem here for me is that, you know, it's third and six. A fake screen is not really a call you think you're going to get. Now, you'd love to have the awareness to kind of peek behind there and see it. The reality is, is you don't always do that, and you're learning these guys are really fast and can catch you. You know, design-wise here for me, this little, like, what I'm going to call fake, we'll call it fake now screen, quick screen, whatever, like we're faking the screen here, and we're going to run what is normally called, like, bluff wheel, bluff seam. Okay, so at the end of the day, it's just all go over here. Well, on third and six, you're not really ever going to throw this screen. To me, this is a great second down call, first down call, not a third and six call. You're not going to throw this screen. You, you're just not from that depth. Maybe a tunnel, maybe if you hate your quarterback and don't trust him. So when you when this takes forever, it's not there. When this takes forever and it's like, it's not there. It's paired with what looks like a seven or corner stop and a check down. You know, I think if Bryce Young had to play this over again, when he says no down here, so don't like this, don't like any of this, it's taking forever. Okay, now I got to go. I'm out. When you get out here, you just got to, you know, you're not going to be able to make a miracle play every time. Just get it to the check down, play this thing a tick faster, faster to the back, and, you know, get a field goal if you can't get a first down. So no, no, got to go. Again, if you throw it to the check down, you know, you avert disaster, you get a completion, you probably have an attempt at a field goal. Here, it's just a bummer. This is taking too long. Again, I don't love the play call. Hitch, 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 go. Uh, oh, damn. And again, a lot of times, I feel like Bryce Young is the type of guy who, as he goes, peeks behind him. That's just a hell of a job. And I, I mean, that's just learning on the job that these guys are fast. Faster than I'm used to on the edge. They can get home like this. And that's a bad feeling right there. Luckily, that's not a scoop and score the other way. Oh, baby. Next one here, third and nine, another rough one. This is a nice job from the Saints defense, I think, going from a split field look to kind of what I'm used to calling 11 lurk. Again, you'd love to be able to hold on to the ball, all those things, Captain Obvious. The other thing you'd love to do is to just have any sort of winner on the perimeter. And I know you've only got three guys running routes here, essentially. Third and nine, third and long is going to be a tough down and distance regardless. But I'll pause it at the top. Where do you want him to go? <laughs> and again, I'm sensitive okay, to the idea that I'm picking on anybody in particular. I'm talking about the entire unit right here on the perimeter. Okay, So not nobody on the offensive line unit, everybody else. Where do you want him to go? Okay, We're coming up here. I'm going to guess that's the number one read. We've got 
the nickel on the outside. We've got the safety coming down this way, essentially doubling that guy. Okay. We've got one on one on the outside. No separation. Okay. Whatever this is supposed to be. Curl. Same thing up top. One on one. I can't even tell you what this route is supposed to be up top. Like a deep out, maybe it takes forever. He never gets out of there. I mean, he's still running his route. Bryce Young's been on the ground. So we're at the top of our drop right there. Boom. Where do you want him to go? I don't know. One hitch in. Nowhere. Two hitches in. You know, maybe you could say, hey, you, you know, nine, you got to get out of there. You know, give it two hitches. Nobody's there. Spin out. I mean, you know, maybe I think that's fair. You know, if he's waiting for whatever that route is up top to come out with outside leverage, getting held, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So I think Bryce Young's issues certainly compounded by a lack of separation on the perimeter. And he could go. Just get out. You know, I, I think he's got to be a little bit, uh, feel like he's a little freer to just be a playmaker. It's blurry. Get out. And again, easier said than done. I get it. Clicker marker, yada, yada, yada. But man, we can't be taking hits like that. Loose with the ball. All bad. My goodness. Next one here. We're going to miss a sale to 19 down here at the bottom. He's the one now. He's the two now. The new two coming out. Got a deep flag paired with him. I think he wins. I think this is as good a separation as you're going to, you could hope for. I don't think it's an easy throw because the DB type could undercut it, but this is a throw I think Bryce Young expects to make. And so, you know, just a, you know, <laughs> barely touches his fingertips. You know, there's something I want to say. I'm not going to. I would just say for my money, a few things here. One, instead of just schematically, how you would maybe potentially coordinate this offense. Instead of doing this like Kelsey slow walk motion and then running the flag in the corner, so like slow it into it, the reason I think Kelsey is good at that in Kansas City is because they just want him to get a free release. He's got the hips and can separate versus anybody. Well, this I, I would want to hit this thing like a 1,000 miles an hour. Boom. Then hit the flag. Then have this thing as it goes full speed short motion, hit it, sell the over, and then come out of it. And I get it. He does win. And I think this is a throw Bryce Young should make. But as we kind of find, if you have to get creative with creating separation, slow motion. Okay. Intentional pun. You're welcome. Slow motion, slow route. Now, nice separation right there. But you can see one still undercuts 19. Like you can't throw that right at him. You got to lay it in there. And, you know, we're just not quite on the same page. But this is a throw you'd love to hit, man. I mean, golly, we need some big chunks here. Get into a rhythm just off the fingertips. Damn. And again, I think it could be helped by how they structure it on the perimeter with the motion, with how those things are put together. Just so close. Halftime, you dig the channel and you haven't already, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, get the notifications. I sincerely appreciate you subscribing to the channel. It means a lot to me personally, so thank you for doing that. Again, the Quarterback School Patreon community, great way to support the channel, get even more Quarterback School content. We also have Quarterback School courses. These courses are by far the most premium, in-depth content available through the channel. If you like how I talk and teach ball, you will love the Quarterback School courses. Really in-depth, detailed, nuanced takes on all of my favorite football subjects, RPOs, tempos, pass protections. The best-selling course is how to beat every single coverage, and we even have an entire offensive system over there. Hop over there, enroll. I appreciate it. Finally, we've got a bunch of free resources available and make sure to follow me across social media platforms. I appreciate your support. As for this video, let's get back to it. Next one here, can't catch it for him. For me, this is a little wrap in up top by the number one. It's a perfect call versus what I'm going to call as a half field safety. And this is perfect. I mean, it's right on him. As my guy JB, Jeff Blake back in the day used to say, can't catch it for him. And we used to have some laughs on the Stairmaster in Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Jerry Springer. Jerry. Jerry. <laughs> right here, though. I mean, so for me, what I'm going to call a wrap in, I have no idea what they call it. You catch a half field safety. So he's out of there. Split field look. Middle field open. I'm going to call this a wrap in. I'm also going to say it's usually paired with a pivot gather. So once this defender type right here, backer for them, comes down on that pivot gather, you think, oh, man, I got this. And he does everything except catching a form. So 
you know, when you get any type of separation and you win and we put it on you, we got to be able to catch it. Everything feels tight. Everything feels condensed. Everything feels difficult and hard. And it's even worse when you drop it. Next one here, third and 11. This is an outstanding scramble from Bryce Young. I, I really think this is what we're going to have to see here over the course of this first season. I like this little move too. He puts a move on in space. Go get an extra 20. Protect yourself. Get down. I love it. This is a hell of a move right here. He puts this thing on middle of the defense uh, with the look off. He keeps running in two-hand touch right there. Now, where do you want him to go with the ball? Top of his drop right there. Where? Who gets the ball? Man coverage just suffocating. Just Carolina's perimeter is just drowning in coverage. Just soaked. There's nowhere to go. That's a terrible feeling as a quarterback. That's a really nice move in the open field. That's a big play. So you're going to see more of this. He's got to go. You got to go create. And if he has to go vertically, he can go take it himself. I don't think he's going to be like a design quarterback, you know, run game type guy. But he can certainly do this. Watch this move. Uh, the thing I like about this move also is watch his head. He puts the move on. He's looking left. Look left, look left. Boom. Hoo-hoo. That is sweet. Yeah. And get down and protect yourself. Be smart. Next one here, third and three. Uh, this is... I understand what this call is for. This call is for man coverage. You think you're getting man. Well, you have to have some sort of zone answer. And then you can't take this sack. This is a terrible sack. Must throw it away when you're outside the pocket. Must throw it away. But this play is a man play. It's a man beater. You're running multiple picks. The problem for me is you don't have any zone options. So what is this play? It's third and three. So they're trying to get the back in the flat as the first option. And not just the back and the flat, but there's picks involved. This shallow is going to be the second option. Now, it's paired with essentially three picks. So the number three, coming across for a pick. The number two, coming across for a pick. The number one, for some reason, looks like he's running like an in. Okay, And that's really the one I have the problem with. So I'm fine with the double picks. I'm fine with this trying to get, you know, you think in third and three, you're going to get man one to two. You have to run through three picks, have to run through two picks. That makes sense to me. The thing that I don't love is that it has no zone answers. So if you catch zone, you've got no to the flat, no to the shallow. You've essentially got these two and three are running dead. I personally prefer, and I think most teams run what is often referred to as a deep hook here over the ball. So you still get three hit, three picks, but now versus zone, you've got this good beater. To give yourself a chance. Like right here, there's nothing. So it just feels like a blind spot in this concept. Now, maybe the number one guy just loses his mind. You know, what route is that guy running up top? I don't know. Post? Doesn't look like it's good versus anything for me. You can see over the ball, though, why that deep hook is so good is because when that mesh clears, I mean, it'd be perfect. And again, I get it, hindsight, whatever, but this is not like my opinion. I mean, it is my opinion. But most times, meshes run with a deep hook. Just run with a deep hook. Stop overthinking it and getting cute. Then we have to throw the ball right there. I don't care if you throw it, you know, like a shot put. You got to get it past the line of scrimmage. You're outside the pocket. Cannot take sack. Just cannot right here. Cannot. And again, I really think he's just learning on the job that these guys are fast. I can get tackled in space now. Damn. But you, as you're going down here, just throw it away. That's a terrible sack. Next one here, third and one, coming out of the two-minute warning, fourth quarter, Sluggo to the bottom. It's never there. That Sluggo, in my opinion, looks like it's in slow motion. I'm just, it's just me, man. I'm just being honest. I'm not trying to be a jerk. I just like, it's not fast enough. In fact, there's no one open. Where do you want the, first watch the Sluggo at the bottom. <laughs> I mean, doesn't it look like he stops? Looks like he's like warming up, doing like cone drills in the spring, in some park somewhere. The ding. I think, I mean, that's never there. That's going to take forever. Get the hell out of here with that route. And then everyone else watch the top of the route. So say he said no to the sluggo. So let's pretend like the sluggo, you know, isn't there. Where else is, where's the ball supposed to go? The number one up top? I mean, maybe with great anticipation and, and accuracy, but there's no number two option. If you don't like the sluggo, where's the ball supposed to go? It just, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, and maybe you're just taking a shot here, third and one. I just I never had a chance. Next one here, probably my favorite Bryce Young throw of the night. We're going to 
fake or shrug the flat to the bottom, rip the corner with anticipation. This is the thing of beauty. This is like one of those, like uh, when you're feeling it on seven on seven type of routes, you can see him turn his shoulder. It operates as almost like a shrug or a pump to the flat. And he's able to throw the corner with anticipation. Y'all, this is, this is it. This is my jam right here. So we're flat and then we're up into the corner or circus. And what he does here is he, this corner right here comes out here and he turns like he's, he like takes his upper body, his left shoulder and kind of like turns it like he's going to get lined up to throw that flat. He then doesn't and throws it with anticipation to the corner. So he does this corner dirty down here to the bottom, the defender, the corner. Just watch this little shoulder action. You I mean, see what it does to the corner at the bottom, 29? I think. Got him. And then the anticipation. When's he let it go? Ooh. Ha <laughs> ha. Yes, please. Thank you, sir. On him. You know, if I was coaching wide receivers in Carolina, I'd say, hey, dog, instead of running out of bounds, let's at least try to get to the pylon. But okay. That's awesome anticipation. And I know the game's essentially out of hand at this point, but this is a this is a great rep. Again, just look at what he does with that shoulder and foot. See how he kind of like shrugs? That's all on intentional. That's just manipulating an eye effing a corner. That's outstanding. Last one here, touchdown pass, bottom of the screen. This is both stick, mirrored routes for me. The number ones are running stick. The number twos are running flats. You know, this is just throwing a flat. Let's, let's be honest. But a nice job getting the ball out of your hand. Get a little garbage touchdown here at the end. Feel a little bit better about this thing. Nice job by 19 fighting for the pylon there. Certainly not making it look easy, but nice touchdown concept for me. Again, both stick is just what it sounds like. We're going to get number one, running those sticks, just up and out. And then the number twos are going right to the flat. And you know, in a perfect world right here, you might like this number one receiver to take his guy and kind of get in the way of whoever he thinks is covering the flat here, you know, and make them bubble over and make it a little bit more difficult, you know. Stick is not my favorite concept versus man coverage, but this is a nice job just getting it out of your hand, catch throw, get him by leverage, fight for the pylon, touchdown. Again, just being decisive here from Bryce Young. I think he, you know, this to me is him being a point guard, just dealing, get it to the open guy, touchdown. So that is a wrap. Bryce Young, tough L versus New Orleans. You know, the few positives here for me are, I think he continues to play with great accuracy, great anticipation. You just don't want to lose those things as the struggles probably continue because there just is no pop on the perimeter. There's no burst. There's no separation. There's not a whole lot of scheming to help, if I'm being honest. Also, I want to see a little bit more answers for him versus every single coverage that he seems to be seeing in these unique down and distances, third down game, have zone answers versus when you have man concepts, things like that. And Bryce Young has just got to learn that this thing is a little bit faster than he's used to. So he's been out of the pocket a few times, getting hawked from behind. Yeah, yes, you'd love to hold on to the ball all the time. That's not always going to happen. But the speed at which these guys are closing is just looks different than what he's used to. You can't be taking sacks when you're outside the pocket. I think he's going to have to continue to create and run. And whether he has to do that himself, I think he's shown that he can do that. And so finding that kind of sweet spot for getting out when it gets muddy or blurry to being able to kind of hang in there and deliver and trust and continue to trust and try to scheme people open so you can win. Because right now things are tough, man. Everything feels like it's like condensed or tight on them. You're not able to take a lot of shots down the field. You can't have people pop wide outside the numbers. So you really have to rely on that anticipation and accuracy. And if that lets you down at all, you couple that with some pass pro issues, some turnovers, and now it's a you know borderline dumpster fire. So not necessarily a great day looking for continued improvement but love the accuracy and anticipation. Just want to see more of it and get some help with those things. So thank you so much for hanging to the end. I will see you next time. Have a good one.